Hey everyone, it's Pal Ponder All Weather. We have a very active setup taking shape in the week ahead. What appears to be a regional severe weather outbreak and some of the biggest snows coming for some areas of the season. So let's take a look at the overall setup going forward and you can actually see this significant storm system that's going to be diving in off the west coast that's bringing all the colder conditions and the rain along the west coast and snow in the interior regions you can see where all the cold air is really locked up into the pacific northwest and all of our western regions the upper midwest and actually fishtailing across portions of new england but further south, it's all about the warm sector, and they're going to be really rapidly warming over the next couple of days, waiting for this significant system, and that could be a game changer heading into the middle of the week. So let's take a look at the overall temperatures this morning, heading into this afternoon, because these temperatures are going to be sore further south. That's almost 100 degrees down there in Mexico, well into the, in, into the 80s for a good part of Texas and across the southeast. Yeah, you can see where the warm air reaches all the way up into Missouri and to portions of Kentucky. But yeah, there's the cold sector out here into the Pacific Northwest and the Intermountain West. Snows are still flying up there into portions of the Dakotas and Minnesota, as well as in portions of New England. Uh, later on this afternoon into the evening time frame where you won't even actually get above freezing uh, later on this afternoon but man look at the gulf of mexico this thing is on fire folks so we're starting spring storm season tomorrow is march 1st so this is the last day of technically meteorologically winter <laughs> and all this counts towards spring going forward and man with this significant storm system that's going to be diving in it's got all this fuel to tap into and that's going to spell trouble with possibly a severe outbreak heading into your thursday time frame going into friday so we're going to break down all the details but before that we have another little short wave that comes across tomorrow morning so it should be some showers and thunderstorms in and around the dallas warworth area three portions of north southeastern portions of oklahoma but then heavier rain really lights up and we could be looking at some severe storms as well into portions of say Little Rock, into the Memphis area, but also very heavy rain and extending into those areas all the way extended into Nashville, back into portions of Knoxville. Those areas could get crushed with very heavy rain and some smaller hail with these particular storms. This is a short wave, the leading edge before the main event that looks to arrive going into your Thursday. So, but here's the cold sector. This is the probabilities of seeing at least two inches of snow over the next 48 hours. Like I mentioned, man, it's not just two inches, it's feet <laughs> up there in portions of the mountains of California. They're just getting crushed uh, this winter with very heavy snow. And then the interior region as well, Flagstaff's gonna be get crushed again a good chunk of the four corners regions into colorado and there's another swath that's coming through portions of the dakotas through portions of minnesota they're going to get hit hard again they just on top of the 20 inches of apple valley just picked up the other day and even snow luckily was flying up there in uh, new york city last night uh, so that has left the building, but now that has shifted further north into portions of Vermont and New Hampshire, especially into Maine, and even Montreal back into Ottawa could get in the action with some of that heavier snows just over the next two days. But there's more to come. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel and if you're in the market for a weather station i highly recommend the tempest weather flow weather station this is the one i personally had myself for the last three years the cool thing about it is it's all solar and it's got a convenient app and it does a little bit of everything you can tie this thing into your irrigation system it's really cool <laughs> so if you would like to purchase one of these i do have a discount code it gives you knocks off 10 percent and free shipping so you can actually Click on this link. I'll have it in the description below. So if you'd like to order one, uh, you can you can do so for yourself. So, but heading into Thursday, this things this is when things get serious, guys. So we we see the system coming in off the west coast now. So that's going to take a beeline and dive all the way into West Texas. Now, what's significant is this is going to be trending a little bit further south than the last system. The last system pretty much put on the brakes into the texas panhandle right there into western oklahoma this actually dives a little bit further south it's going to tap into more of that gulf fuel right 
but it's also going to bring the severe threat not only further south but further west the deal of it is this actually has slowed down than the guidance of yesterday slowing down adds more fuel to the fire and that puts the puts the uh the alignment further west so the storm prediction center did in fact upgrade and move the system further westbound here's some of the dew points so this is definitely concerning we're going into spring storm season this is thursday possibly around six o'clock things should light up or along the dry line here out here, here into uh, west texas right basically west of the i-35 corridor take advantage of these low 70 dew points upper 60 dew points that extend all the way to the oklahoma border man this is a very dynamic setup unfortunately looks to unfold the tornado parameters are really screaming high so things are stomach starting to come together to looking like a significant event with all three modes for sure on the table and there's no cap in place this time for the dallas worth area it's going to help you out because last two systems you had that cap in place it's not there folks so this is there's nothing going to be stopped these thunderstorms the rising 50 60 000 feet up in the atmosphere so that trend has a slower system has pushed this further westbound and it does encompass more of the Fort Worth area into the Dallas Fort Worth area into Waco, Lufkin, Longview, Texarkana, Paris. This is an extremely large hatched risk that basically implies you have up the ante on the potential danger of very large hail potential and very high damaging winds, 70 plus miles an hour within this zone. We're still going to be fine tuning this. But the trend has pushed westbound. So I think the initiation of these storms are essentially going to be in somewhere around, you know, the Weatherford, the, the Fort Worth area, about towards Abilene potentially, and then shift east going into, say, about four o'clock time frame on Thursday, and then really intensifying heading into East Texas. I do feel East Texas will be upgraded to a moderate risk by the time we get to the, you know, closer to this event. But I'll be fine tuning this in the days to come. And I'll actually be doing live coverage um, on this channel with, uh, with you know, the, for the entire duration of the event from this looks to be a pretty much a regional severe weather outbreak because this just extends heading into the Arklatex into the mississippi area into the overnight hours with a big big threat and just a little bit further north it's all about the intense heavy rain and in fact they already included a moderate risk for very heavy rain just in the northwest side of that upper level low so in memphis you get crushed back to back with very heavy rain not just tomorrow but especially headed into Thursday time frame in and around the Little Rock area, back into Memphis, into Nashville again. This is the bullseye where you could easily, easily get four to six inches, if not more, just on that Wednesday, Thursday time frame. Even down in the Dallas Worth area, back into Fort Worth, all these areas in green could pick up possibly one, maybe two inches. It is gonna be very fast moving. This is gonna be another fast moving system, folks. 50, 60 miles an hour. So but it's going to be extending and this is good these are training supercell thunderstorms and then training you know uh, we could be looking at flash flooding within this sector you know headed into your thursday time frame but just to the northwest of that it's all about the snow folks so you got the back side of this system this is a very core cold dynamic system and then you will get the back side so you have a little bit of a snow breaking out into the Oklahoma area. I can't even roll out some snow, wet snowflakes flying in around portions of the Red River areas, but man, it really starts to crank. I think this is the latest NAM. <laughs> this is overdone, folks. This is just in a 24 hour time frame. I know I don't think it's gonna snow two to three feet in Iowa on, on, your, on your Thursday, Friday morning, but that's the latest NAM output. That shows you how dynamic this system is and where these where this really sets up, you're gonna get crushed with very heavy snow on the Northwest side of this low pressure. The latest European over that last 24 hour time frame is a lot less bullish. So yes, I think the NAM is definitely a little bit overdone with that particular setup, but it just kind of shows you the trend. It pushing further south would probably eclipse right around the Red River areas, breaking out the snow in Oklahoma, really turning 
up there in northwestern Missouri, back into Iowa, fishtailing across portions of northern portions of Illinois. I think Chicago gets really hit hard from this system, and that's just over the next uh, that 24-hour time span. But yes, heading into your Friday, that severe threat with the regional outbreak just extends further east, and now we're setting up shop across the uh, the Birmingham area, back in the Columbus area, in the in the Atlanta, Georgia area. This just extends into Columbia, back into Charlotte area, into Nashville. So those get hit hard with very, you know, intense thunderstorms, not as intense as you're going to what you're going to be seeing on your Thursday time frame. But still, nonetheless, uh, this is a high impact event, multi day event with two days back to back severe storms, very heavy rain, flooding rains and then crushed with very heavy snow. Even even the Colorado State University is a high impact event back to back puts the bullseye essentially somewhere starting just maybe west of the Dallas Fort Worth area, getting into central Texas, especially down to the Houston area this time, into east Texas is going to get hit hard with this system. Southeastern Oklahoma, especially into the Arklatex, getting into Louisiana, back into Mississippi. Those areas need to be on high alert on your Thursday time frame. And then that just extends into the southeast, heading up the east coast into the Carolinas onto your Friday afternoon, Friday evening time frame. But yes, to the northwest of that, that's where the snow is really going to be cranking with that deepening 979 millibar low pressure. The snow is going to be really cranking off portions of Iowa. They're into into the Chicago region, back into southern portions of Michigan here. That fish tails into portions of the Mid-Atlantic and heading back into the Northeast where you've been desperately needing a big event. And this is going to be one of your one of the probably the biggest events of the season. You've had a you know basically a snow drought really all winter. So yeah, this looks to be a significant event for a winter storm up here into the Northeast with the heaviest snows of the season for a lot of the areas uh, up here, especially heading into Friday into your Saturday time frame. Here's the latest European guidance, you know, painting a p- picture of a lot of pink on the map with a good, you know, eight to 12 inches, no question about it, across portions of Pennsylvania, northern portions of Jersey, and into upstate New York, back into Massachusetts, uh, Connecticut, back into the Rhode Island area, Vermont, New Hampshire, back into, into Maine, portions of Toronto and the Montreal, those areas get crushed with this particular system. That's the Euro guidance and there's the expansion of the Euro. So it starts out West, trends fishtails down on to, into the Four Corners regions. This is where the low pressure center stops into West Texas on the Northwest side of there. That's where the band of snow is gonna really break out on the back side of this upper level low in and around the Oklahoma area fishtailing across into northwestern portions of Missouri and then heading into right there into Iowa, getting into northern portions of Illinois, heading into central and north, uh, uh, you know, southern and central you know, Michigan here. And then that just extends into the northeast. So here's the GFS, a little bit more bullish. It's got a little bit deeper low off the northeast coast and actually brings in heavier snows as well. So if we kind of zoom in and look at the two and some of these guidances going forward, this is on top of what maybe you saw already, another possibly eight or so inches in and around the Boston area. These numbers are nice to see because again, these are areas that Hadn't seen any snow at all, hardly at all. Really six inches in New York City. That would by far easily be your biggest snows of the season. Even two and a half inches in Philly would be your biggest snow of the season. Okay, this isn't saying much, but obviously these areas haven't had little to much of anything in the snow, snow arena. But I think a game changer is on the table, and this is just the beginning of what I think's to come for the month of March. So you're trying to gonna make up for lost time up in the Northeast, but. I feel like you do got plenty of winter left up here into the Northeast. <laughs> so let's break down the GFS. Cause again, like I mentioned, it's a little bit more bullish. It brings the snow totals a little higher. It brings a foot up there in New York City, a foot in Boston. So either way, this is definitely a by far the biggest s- snowstorm of the season. Well, again, we'll be fine tuning this overall track. Right now, the track is, right now the system's off the West Coast, right? So this has got to go all the way across the board 
and then you know some depending on the speed and how it stalls out here into uh, off into the ocean depends on the amount of you know obviously snow amounts you know going forward so we'll be fine-tuning this but beyond that like i mentioned we have a complete breakdown on the powder and i think the southeast ridge will be slowly trying to eat away we do have more colder air we've got blocking starting to set up at heading into next week warmer temperatures in alaska warmer temperatures across the north and in, in greenland and northern portions of canada puts the colder air underneath and amplifies it so this is your overall ensemble guidance for all of next week so it does slowly try to eat away the southeast ridge and we'll probably won't be dealing with severe weather you know next week we'll be dealing with wintertime weather <laughs> for a lot of places and here's the gfs it's got a little bit more bullish on the southeast ridge i'm not really buying this particular setup right now but again i'm just going to show you all the global guidance what we have to look at europeans a little bit more bullish on the colder air push, pushing further south and it lines up with the canadian as well and it also sees the warmer lakes that tells you how how warm this winter has been with these lakes still had not even frozen over guys so it puts the above average you know sea surface anomalies over the lakes so that's pretty cool to see and this is you know going into march this is kind of pretty sad that's how that's that's the winter we've had guys i mean so but the good thing is we got a little bit colder air winter does want to hang on a little bit longer of course it'll be modified it's march not not january or february but this will be modified but still looks to be below average for a good part of the u.s heading into next week so i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update fire protect you before and after the storm